Number 10, this figure over here shows an initial stationary block of mass m on a floor. A force of magnitude 0.5 m times g is then applied at upward angle of 20 degrees. What is the magnitude of the acceleration of the block across the floor if the friction coefficients are so letter A mu s equals to 0.6, mu k equals to 0.5, and letter B mu s equals to 0.4 and mu k equals to 0.3. So let's draw the free body diagram of this block over here. So this is the block. So we have the gravitational force over here, so Fg. We also have the normal force pointing upwards, normal force. We have this force over here, the F. Let's draw F over here. And we have to decompose this force into one x component and one y component. So this is the x component, and the x component is equal to f times the cosine of theta, the angle over here. So this is the angle, right? And we also have the y component. So this is the y component, fy, which is equal to f times the sine of the angle. And of course, we have the friction, friction force over here. So this is a free body diagram and we want to calculate the acceleration of the block. So let's remember from Newton's second law that the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. So if we apply Newton's second law to the horizontal forces, there is the x direction. So let's suppose that the x direction increases to the right. So we only have two different forces. So it's going to be fx, which is f cosine of theta, minus the friction force, which is equal to mass times the acceleration in the x direction. So if we want to find the acceleration in the x direction, we have to calculate the frictional force over here. So let's just isolate the acceleration here so it, that we are going to use it later. So F cosine of theta minus friction divided by the mass of the block. Okay, so this way we're, we are going to find the acceleration. However, of course, we have to find the friction. So if we have to find the friction force, first we have to decide if the block is moving or not. Because if the block is not moving, it's not moving, the friction force will be the static friction force, which is smaller or equal than mu s times the normal force. And if the block is moving, then the friction force will be the kinetic friction force, which is equal to mu k times the normal force. So we have to decide if it's moving or not. And the criterion to decide if, if it's moving or not is that if the, 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 this force over here, fx, so we have to find if if x is greater than f s max and remember that f s max is equal to mu s times the normal force right so we have to find the maximum frictional force that we can have and compare it with the other horizontal force, which is Fx, and if Fx is greater than the, the maximum frictional force, the block will start moving, and if it starts moving, we use this equation over here, and if it's not moving, we're going to use those equations over there, right? But it's, it's kind of easier if it's not moving. If it's not moving, the acceleration is zero, right? If it's not moving, the acceleration is zero, so we don't have to make any other calculations. Okay, so we want to find the maximum frictional force to make this, this comparison over here. So we need the normal force, right? 
we need to, the normal force to calculate Fs max and then compare with Fx and decide if it's moving or not. So we are going to find the normal force by applying Newton's second law to the y direction. So let's suppose that upwards is the positive y direction. So we have, let's see, we have the normal force pointing upwards plus Fy and Fy is equal to F sine of theta minus Fg. And this is equal to mass times acceleration in the y direction. However, the block is not flying or entering the earth, so the acceleration is zero in the y direction, right? Okay, so remember that we want to calculate the normal force. So the normal force would be equal to Fg, and Fg is equal to mass times gravity minus F sine of theta, right? So let's calculate the maximum frictional force. So for letter A first, so Fs max is equal to mu S times the normal force, which is equal to mg minus F sine of theta, however, F is 0 0.5 mg times the sine of 20 degrees. And this calculation gives us, let's see, 0 0.497 m times g. So we have to compare this value with this value over here. And fx is equal to f cosine of 20 degrees. And this gives us, uh, let's see, 0 0.470 m times g. So we can notice that the maximum frictional force that we can have is higher than fx. So the conclusion is that the the block's not moving for letter A. So if the block's not moving, of course the acceleration is equal to zero, right? So that's the answer of letter A. We have to do the same procedure for letter B. So for letter B, let's calculate the maximum frictional force. And the only thing that changes is the mu S. So the mu S in this case changes a little bit so it's the same calculation over here the only thing that will change is this value over here that instead of being 0 0.6 now it's 0 0.4 and then you will get 0 0.332 m times g so it's clear that for letter b the maximal frictional force is smaller than fx so the block is moving so it is moving so the frictional force that we have for letter b is equal to the kinetic frictional force which is equal to fk mu k fn right so we can replace this frictional force to calculate the acceleration over there so the acceleration in the x direction is equal to f cosine of theta minus mu k times mg minus 0 0.5 mg sine of 20 degrees and this is divided by the mass. So we can cross out the masses, right? Because we have mass in this component, this and this. So we can cross out the masses. So let's remember that F is equal to Fx, which is equal to F cosine of 20 degrees is equal to 0 0.470 M times G. 
So if you will replace the letter by the numbers, you are going to find, let's see, you're going to find 2.17 meters per square second. So that's the answer of letter B.